Monster Hunter World Iceborne's endgame can be a challenge for the best of hunters out there, but with the right weapons and builds, even endgame tasks can be easily achieved. I'm Darkblade, and we're back with even more amazing builds for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at endgame builds for the bow. The bow is a fast and maneuverable ranged weapon, tending to make use of fast attacks over slow strong ones, the bow really benefits when it comes to using elemental weapons. As a result, the bow is a very popular weapon in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, but it is a dual hungry weapon, which means sacrifices have to be made when creating the various builds the bow can utilise. Nonetheless, the builds I've gone for in this video highlight the sheer damage potential the bow has, as well as leaving room for some personal customizations. A disclaimer for this series though, these builds are aimed for endgame hunters, having completed the main story and having access to all armors and weapons the game has to offer. A large jewel collection is also desired, but you can always swap out jewels here and there if you don't possess the ones shown in these videos. So the first build I use is the True Critical Element build. True Critical Element builds with the bow are considered the main meta for the bow in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, but you can still customize them slightly with jewels and charms. For example, you could drop a few jewels in your DPS potential to allow you some survivability. As always, the choice is up to you. This build demonstrates a balance between DPS and survivability. Of course, the bow naturally leans more towards DPS than defense, so keep that in mind. So for this, you'll need the Golden Loon Helm Beta, the Silver Soul Mail Beta, Silver Soul Braces Beta, Silver Soul Coil Beta, and the Silver Soul Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Blaze Charm 5, although replace this to match the element of whatever weapon you're using and for my weapon I'm using this silver raft bow to which I've added an affinity increase augmentation element up augmentation and then custom mods to increase its overall elemental damage as for the jaws remember like I said at the start of the video if you don't possess the jaws shown in this video you can simply replace them with something you have access to but the main ones you want to consider are definitely the mighty bow jaw this provides you with the bow charge plus skill afterwards i've gone for tenderizer jaws for weakness exploit one of these came with a byproduct of a maintenance jaw which added a few points in the tool specialist skill i've then gone for physique jaws to give us three points in the constitution skill refresh jaws to give us a few levels in the stamina surge skill I've then gone for Expert Jaws to give us some critical eye. And finally, I've gone for a Blaze Jaw to max out the fire attack skill. Of course, if you're using a different weapon with a different element, replace the Blaze Jaw to match whatever element you are using. As for the mantles, they're down to personal preference. For the most part, I've gone for Destroyer Jaws to give us a few points in the Part Breaker skill. And with the Impact Mantle, I've included a Four Shot Jaw to give us a point in the Normal Shot skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. If you're on a hunt and you've taken all your relevant consumables, you'll have an attack of 331 with 50% base affinity, which will actually be 100% affinity. So long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first, you have an elemental rating of 640 with close range power and poison coatings with a strong defense of 939 that is exceedingly strong against fire and dragon but unfortunately weak to the other elements. So as for the skills you have fire attack level 6, fire attack increases the fire rating and damage of a build and also if you're using a different weapon with a different element as well as charm and jewel this will be replaced with whatever element you are using so thunder attack, ice attack so on and so forth. You have Slinger Capacity level 5. Slinger Capacity is a byproduct of the gear we're wearing. This increases the amount of Slinger ammunition we can have at any one point. You have Critical Eye level 4, increasing the base affinity of this build. Health Boost level 3, increasing our maximum health to that potential 200. You have Critical Boost level 3. Critical Boost increases the damage of our attacks when we crit a monster. However, it's only the raw portion of our attack. So for this build, it will only be the 331 portion of the attack. It won't do anything to the elemental portion. You have Weakness Exploit level 3. Weakness Exploit increases our affinity by a set percentage so long as we're attacking monster weak points. And if these weak points have been tenderized first through clutch crawl attacks, this affinity increase is even more potent. You have Constitution level 3. Constitution is a wonderful skill for the bow as it reduces the stamina cost of certain moves, so firing the bow or dodging. You only really need to get it to level 3 as this can be topped up with dash juice to increase the effects. You have Stamina Surge at level 2, increasing the rate at which our stamina recharges itself over time. You have Windproof level 1, a byproduct of the gear but helps resist minor wind effects. You have Tool Specialist level 1, a byproduct of the jewels we're wearing. This reduces the cooldown timer on our various mantles and specialist tools. 
You have bow charge plus level one. This is an essential skill for the bow as it allows us to charge the bow up one further level, overall increasing our damage. As for your mantle jewels, you have part breaker, which allows us to break monster body parts more easily and normal shots level one. Normal shots increases the damage of our R2 or RT shots, but only the raw attack portion of the attack. It does nothing to increase the elemental portion. But the most important aspect about this build is the set bonus, the Silver Ravalos Essence. Now the two set bonus provides you with the Slinger Ammo Secret, allowing the Slinger Capacity skill to go up from level 3 to level 5, increasing the amount of Slinger Ammunition we have even further. This means that when we perform a Clutch Claws flinch shot, sending a monster into a wall or over a ledge or something, we should have enough ammo to potentially perform a follow-up flinch shot. But the main reason is the four set bonus true critical element that increases our elemental damage of our attacks when we crit a monster. So think of it like crit boost, but for the elemental portion of your attack. And as with most bows, normally the elemental rating for a bow is higher than the raw attack. Critical element, or in this case, true critical element is essential. Remember that true critical element is even stronger than the base critical element. So the increase in elemental damage is even further. So there we have it, that is the true critical element build that I like to use. Now you may see other hunters using slight variations of this build, for example some of them will drop the golden loon helm in favour of the silver raffalos helm beta, as well as dropping the silver soul greaves in favour of the garuga greaves. But this may lead you with a little bit less survivability as there may be a drop in health boost. But by doing this you may see an increase in your overall DPS. Nonetheless though, I wanted a true critical element build that had a little bit of survivability when it came to taking hits from monsters. But every build has its pros and cons. Obviously the biggest pro with this build is its high damage output. Not only having a high elemental rating and affinity, it also makes use of the wonderful true critical element skill as well as the crit boost skill. On top of that, it's a build that can also be customized very easily. You can easily swap out the bow for another bow with a different element, and at the same time swap out the blaze charm to match the element of that weapon. So you don't need to reconfigure things when you want to use a different element. And finally, for the pros, this build also comes with quite a few quality of life skills. Having health boost, constitution, and stamina surge will all add to this build's overall performance. But unfortunately, there are a few cons. For example, if you're using a different weapon that has very low or negative affinity, the build may not work as well. And the remaining con is, unfortunately, it is very dual heavy. The Silver Raphalos set doesn't come with a lot of the skills you need for the bow, such as Constitution or Bow Charge Plus, which can leave players at a disadvantage if they don't have the duels. It also means that we couldn't max out the DPS potential of this bow build by maxing out the normal and power shot skills. But regardless, so long as you're taking into account a monster's elemental weaknesses, this bow build is incredibly versatile and incredibly strong. So that brings us on to the next build, which is the True Element Acceleration build. This build makes use of the True Element Acceleration skill, increasing a build's potential elemental rating and overall damage. Unlike the previous build as well, it doesn't really rely on crit that much, so it works well with bows that have low affinity ratings, always one for players who really dislike the Clutch Claw mechanic. So for this build you need the Golden Headdress Beta, the Tentacle Cloak Beta, Tentacle Gloves Beta, Tentacle Coil Beta and the Tentacle Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Wormsbane Charm 5 as we are making a Dragon Elemental build. This of course can be replaced to match whatever element you are using and for my weapon I'm using the Death Bow Val Velos which is the Black Veil Val Hazak Bow to which I've augmented it with Affinity Increase, Elemental Up Increase and a Defense Increase but this is purely optional this one. I've also gone for custom mod to increase the overall build's elemental rating. So when it comes to the jewels, you have a lot to play around with here, to which I've done something a little bit unusual. Now first of all, I've gone for a dragon jewel to max out the dragon attack of this build. Of course, replace this to match whatever element you are using if you're using a different weapon. After which I've gone for a mighty bow jewel to give us that bow charge plus skill, a physique jewel to give us some constitution. I've then gone for KO and vitality jewels, mainly for the health boost, but the knockout effect, thanks to the slugger skill, is also welcome, especially when performing the arc shot move, which causes rocks to rain down from the sky. After which I've gone for expert jewels to give us a little bit of extra affinity, and finally a mind's eye jewel. Now this is purely optional. The mind's eye jewel basically eliminates the range issues with the power shot coating. With the power shot coating, normally you have to be a certain distance away from the monster before the power shots hit their hardest, but with the mind's eye jaw, you can be point blank and the power shots will be doing maximum damage. 
Again, when it comes to the mantles, I've gone for Destroyer and Four Shot Jewels, and as I'm using the Rocksteady Mantle here, I've also gone for Protection Jewels for a bit of Divine Blessing. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 318 with 36% affinity, which will actually be 86% affinity so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first. You'll have an elemental rating of 6 680 with average elder seal with close range power and sleep coatings and as for your defense you have a base defense of 932 that is very strong against water and thunder but unfortunately a little bit weak to the other elements so as for the skills you have dragon attack level 6 increasing the dragon rating and damage of this build as always with most bow builds you'll replace this to match whatever element you are using you have critical eye level 5 health boost level 3 weakness exploit level 3 slugger level 3 slugger increases the potential that our attacks can knock out a monster and as the arc shot also has a natural knockout effect this increases that even further although it's not as good as it was before monster underworld iceborne so if you are going to replace any jewels the ko jewels are probably the ones you want to go for anyway you also have constitution level 3 stamina surge level 3 stamina surge with this build is a byproduct of the gear but a level 3 stamina surge is definitely welcome you have tool specialist level 3 Blight Resistance level 1, a byproduct of the gear, but helps resist elemental and ailment blights. You have Bow Charge plus level 1, Mind's Eye and Ballistics level 1, which like I just explained in the jewel section, allows us to use the power coatings pretty much at point blank. And you have the Mantle skills, Divine Blessing, allowing us to potentially take reduced damage when we take a hit from a monster, as well as Normal Shots and Part Breaker. You also have the set bonuses, Namiel's Divinity, True Elemental Acceleration which means that after a brief period of attacking a monster constantly, this buff will kick in, increasing the elemental rating of this build. And as this build already has a high elemental rating, this buff is quite strong. So there we have it. As I said, this is a build for players who don't necessarily like to constantly tenderize a monster and go for the critical hits, and instead just wants the highest elemental damage they can possibly get. It's also a build that works really well with bows that have the low affinity ratings, but have incredibly high elemental ratings. Another aspect players should be aware of is that if you don't have access to the golden headdress which is the Rajang headgear you can replace this with maybe the Fogel and Janath headgear which has similar stats and jaw sockets. But every build has its pros and cons. The biggest pro with this build is its high elemental rating which is increased even further with the true elemental acceleration. Again on top of that it is a build that can be easily customized swapping out the dragon bow and charm for another bow and charm that has a different element. And again, it is a build that has decent quality of life skills, having constitution, a maxed out stamina surge, maxed out tool specialist, and maxed out slugger and health boost. These all complement the build very well, allowing for more comfortable hunts. But unfortunately, as always, there are cons. The biggest con, unfortunately, with this build, as with pretty much every single bow build, is unfortunately its reliance on jewels. Much like I said in the previous build, if you don't have access to a decent jewel collection, you may struggle a little bit. The other con with this build is unfortunately it has to use bows that have high elemental ratings. But regardless, although this build may not be the strongest in terms of DPS, it's definitely one to consider if you want a comfortable hunt. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the True Critical Element version 2 build. This build shows off the true damage potential of the bow's True Critical Element build, sacrificing all survivability in favour for maximum DPS. So for this build you'll need the Silver Soul Helm Beta, the Silver Soul Mel Beta, the Kaiser Van Braces Beta, the Silver Soul Coil Beta and the Silver Soul Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Shock Charm 5 as we're going for a Thunder build and for my weapon I'm using the Despot's Early Bolt which is the Zenoga Bow. Although you can replace this with other bows so long as they have a decent elemental rating as well as decent raw attack rating. With the previous builds we haven't really had to worry about raw attack but with this build you need to take it into consideration. As for the augmentations I've gone for an infinity increase augmentation and elemental effect up. So as for your jewels again it is a jewel hungry build. First of all I've gone for the mighty bow jewel for that bow charge plus skill. I've then gone for four shot jewels to get that maxed out normal shot skill. Spread jewels for that maxed out power shot skill. I've then gone for tenderizer jewels. One of these had a byproduct of a maintenance jewel for that weakness exploit as well as tool specialist. I've then gone for physique jewels for that constitution skill. One of these came with a byproduct of a refresh jewel attached to it for a little bit of stamina surge. I've then gone for an expert jewel and finally a bolt jewel to max out the thunder attack and remember to replace this to match whatever element you are using. 
As for the specialist tools, these are kind of important with this build as we are going for maximum DPS. I've gone for an Affinity Booster Plus as well as the Evasion Mantle. And with the Evasion Mantle, I've gone for two Flawless Jewels to give us that peak performance skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, which will be a 150 health, 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack rating of 342 with 20% base affinity, which will be 70% affinity when you're on a hunt and you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized first. This will be 100% when you're using the affinity booster. You'll also have an elemental rating of 420 with close range and power coatings. And when it comes to your defense, you have a base defense of 933 with a strong defense against fire and dragon, but unfortunately you're weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have Thunder Attack level 6, Windproof level 3. This is a byproduct of the gear, but like I said, it helps resist medium wind effects. You have Crit Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Constitution level 3, Normal Shots level 2. As I said, Normal Shots increases the damage of our R2 or RT shots, but it will only increase the raw attack portion of our attack. It won't increase the elemental portion. That's the reason we need a bow with a decent base attack rating. You have power shots level 2. This increases the damage of our power shots. So shots performed with circle or B. And once again this only increases the raw attack portion of our shots. That's another reason for a bow with a decent attack rating. You have slinger capacity level 2. Heat guard level 1. This is a byproduct of the gear but helps us ignore any heat effects such as the lava zones in both the elders recess and the guiding lands. You have critical eye level 1. Stamina Surge level 1, Tool Specialist level 1, Bow Charge Plus level 1, and finally when it comes to the Evasion Mantle, you have Peak Performance level 2, increasing our raw attack so long as we have full health. You also have the Set Bonus Silver Rathalos Essence, Slinger Ammo Secret, and True Critical Element, to which we've already talked about in the first build. So there you have it, this is a build that shows off the true damage potential of the Silver Rathalos set when combined with Bow. Like I said, having a decent raw attack rating as well as a decent elemental rating is what you need to strive for. And whilst the Zenoga bow may not be the best out there, it's a good example of a bow that balances both. What you want to do with this build is to get a monster into a position where you can activate the Evasion Mantle's buff by dodging a monster's attack at the right moment, combined with the effects of the Affinity Booster, and you'll have a brief period where your damage output will be through the roof. But it's easier said than done, and as always there'll be pros and cons. The biggest pro is this build's staggering damage output. So long as a hunt goes well, and so long as you're on the ball when it comes to timing, you can bring down monsters incredibly quick with this build. It's also another bow build that can be easily customised, swapping out the Zenoga bow and Thunder Charm for other weapons and charms of different elements. As always, remember to also swap out the jewel. And finally with the pros, and I could argue this one a little bit, it is a bow for players who definitely want a challenge. But unfortunately, as always, there are cons to every build. There are two major ones with this build. Firstly is the survivability issues. Obviously when you're taking on the harder monsters in the game, if they hit you with the right attack, it can pretty much one shot you. And the other con is unfortunately, it does rely a little bit too much on your mantles and specialist tools. But regardless, this is a fun build to try out and test your luck. But if you're in the right mindset, your dodges are on point and attacks true, then this build is incredibly satisfying. But that brings us on to the next build, which is a quirky build known as the Dragon Piercer build. This build makes use of the bow's Dragon Piercer move combined with the Frostcraft skill, which is the Volcana set bonus. Using this build means that you'll have to adopt a different playstyle with the bow, but it makes for a change and is surprisingly fun against the right type of monster. So for this build you need the Naga Cougar Helm Beta, the Rhyme Guard Mel Beta, Rhyme Guard Van Braces Beta, Rhyme Guard Coil Beta and the Rhyme Guard Greaves Beta. I'm also using an Attack Charm 4 and for my weapon I'm using the Beast King's Thunder Bow that has an Attack and Affinity Increase Augmentation. Basically you need to use a bow that has high raw attack so a good replacement would be the Acidic Glavinous Bow if you don't have access to Rajang yet. Now as for the jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with here. Firstly, of course, I've gone for the Mighty Bow Jewel, a Pierce Jewel for that piercing shot skill. I've then gone for Vitality Jewels for that health boost. One of the Vitality Jewels also had a Draw Jewel attached to it for that critical draw skill. I've then gone for Critical Jewels, which came with a whole bunch of byproducts, including a Protection Jewel for Divine Blessing and Maintenance Jewels for Tool Specialist. And finally, I've gone for True Shot Jewels to provide us the special ammo boost skill. As for the jewels on the mantles, for the temporal mantle I've gone for attack jewels to give us a little bit of extra attack boost and for the glider mantle I've gone for flawless protection jewels to max out divine blessing as well as provide us a little bit of peak performance. 
So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 410 with 5% affinity. You have a thunder rating of 120 with close range and power coatings. And as for your defense, you have a decent base defense of 891. That is strong against water and ice, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have attack boost level 4, although this can potentially be level 6 when we're wearing our mantles. Attack boost increases the raw damage of our build, and at level 4 it also provides us a bonus 5% affinity. You have health boost level 3, critical boost level 3, critical draw level 3, which increases our affinity by 100% when performing draw attacks. Now with the bow, things are a little bit different, as you can actually hold the draw attack. So the idea would be to pull out the bow, hold it, Till it's charged up to maximum and then immediately press triangle and circle or y and b and then go into that dragon piercer which will have the bonus 100 affinity that critical draw provides you have quick sheave level 3 a byproduct of the gear but is very useful and needed for this build as it allows us to sheave our weapon quickly so after you've fired the dragon piercer sheave your weapon again rinse and repeat so you're always rotating that 100 affinity boost. You have piercing shots level 2, increasing the damage of our dragon piercer, special ammo boost level 2, which also increases the damage of our dragon piercer, as well as the thousand dragons attack. You have flinch free level 2, a byproduct of the gear but helps resist knockbacks a little bit. You have tool specialist level 2, peak performance at a potential level 3, increasing the raw attack of this build, divine blessing at a potential level 3 when we're wearing mantles. You have bow charge plus level 1, and finally you'll have the Velkana's divinity set bonus critical element, which increases the elemental portion of our attack when we crit a monster, and more importantly for this build, Frostcraft. Frostcraft is a unique set bonus that provides players with a gauge underneath their health and stamina bars. This gauge increases a build's raw attack but depletes over time whilst your weapon is drawn and you attack a monster. So this works well in unison with the critical draw and quick sheath skill as the Frostcraft buff will always be refreshed allowing us for maximum damage output. So there you have it. As I said it is a very quirky build and you do have to adopt a different play style. Like I said the idea and rotation behind your attacks would be to draw your weapon and hold it, charge it up either by dodging or just simply holding R2 or RT and then when the bow is fully charged up go into your dragon piercer attack to hit the monster after which sheath the weapon wait for the frostcraft buff to kick in again this is indicated by your weapon glowing blue and white and then you rinse and repeat now whilst this may not be the most efficient way of playing the bow it's definitely different and fun especially when you're taking into account a monster's length if you're taking on monsters such as brute wyverns or the bigger flying wyverns or elder dragons it means that the dragon piercer can rip through them quite quickly but of course as always there are pros and cons the biggest pro for this build is its burst damage its constant damage output is going to be a little bit low unfortunately but for those short moments when you do get a perfect dragon piercer attack off the damage can really rack up it's also a build that doesn't really have to worry about tenderizing a monster's body part first. Although this can help on certain monsters, it's not required for this build. Which brings us on to our final pro, which is a little bit subjective, and that is I think the build looks one of the best in the game. The Velkana set is a very pretty armor set, and being able to show it off in a build is something I've longed to do. Just remember to hide the helm. But unfortunately there are cons. Unfortunately this build is a very niche build and thus you have to adopt a different playstyle. And unfortunately the last con is it won't work on every monster. When you're taking on a monster that is kind of small, say like for example Rajan, that doesn't have as many hit points when a piercing shot goes through them, it means that this build isn't going to be at its best. So there we have it, that is the Dragon Piercer build. Like I said, it's a different way to play the bow, it may not be the most optimal, but it provides variety. Now one thing I should have pointed out as well, is that when using this build, I find it's better to react to a monster. Instead of just going in for the kill, attacking before a monster moves and that, instead react to what the monster does. So you go into your Dragon Piercer after the monster has performed its move. But should you get the playstyle down, the right rotations, this build is fun and can easily lop off a monster's tail. Which brings us on to our fifth and final build, which is the Bow Guiding Lands build. This build is a little bit of an all-round build that you can take into the Guiding Lands and allow you to farm monsters pretty effectively. As a result, it provides you with most of the essentials a Bow build needs, but not necessarily specialising in any one area. So, for this build you need the Rhyme Guard Helm Beta, the Kirin Jacket Beta, Rhyme Guard Van Braces Beta, the Tentacle Coil Beta and the Tentacle Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Frost Charm 5, 
which again can be replaced to match whatever element you are using. And for my weapon, I'm using the Icicle Blizzard 2, which is the Baryoth bow. This has an ability increase augmentation as well as an elemental up augmentation. It also has custom bow mods to increase the build's elemental rating. So for the jewels you'll need the following. First of all a frost jewel to max out the frost attack of this build. Of course this will be replaced to match whatever element you are using. You have the mighty bow jewel for that bow charge plus skill. A physique jewel for a little bit of constitution. Tenderizer jewels for that weakness exploit. One of them came with a byproduct of a maintenance jewel to provide us a little bit of tool specialist. I've then gone for destroyer jewels. These are kind of mandatory when you're going for the guiding lands as it gives us a maxed out part breaker skill. These all came with byproducts of vitality jewels that gave us a maxed out health boost. Afterwards, I've gone for a geology jewel for a point in the geologist skill. And finally, a fortitude jewel to provide us that fortify skill. As for the mantles, I've simply gone for expert jewels to give us a little bit of extra critical eye and some sheave jewels that provide us with the quick sheave skill. So if you don't know what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 294 with 50% base affinity, which will easily be 100% affinity so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You have an elemental rating of 650 with close range and power coatings. And as for your defense, you have an okay defense of 899 that is strong against water, thunder and ice, but unfortunately weak to dragon and fire. As for the skills, you have ice attack level 6. Ice attack increases the ice rating and damage of this build. You have health boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, part breaker level 3, which is essential for guiding lands builds as it helps you break off monster body parts and materials more easily. You have constitution level 3. Stamina Surge level 3, Divine Blessing level 3, Critical Eye level 2, although potentially a maximum of level 4. You have Fortify level 1. Fortify is a useful skill in the Guiding Lands, as every time you cart, Fortify buff will kick in, increasing your attack and defense. This effect is increased each time you cut to a maximum of two times. You have Quick Sheave at a potential level 3. Geologist level 1. This again is another essential skill for Guiding Land builds as it allows you to loot the monster materials that drop off of a monster twice instead of just once. So long as they're the higher tier monsters. I don't know if this was intentional or a bug, but currently it still works. You'll also have Flinch 3 level 1, Tour Specialist level 1 and Bow Charge Plus level 1. You also have the following set bonuses, Namiel's Divinity, Elemental Acceleration, increasing the elemental rating and damage of a build when we attack a monster constantly for a certain amount of time. Whilst not as good as true Elemental Acceleration, it is still nonetheless useful. You also have the Velkana's Divinity, Critical Element, allowing the elemental portions of our attack to do increased damage when we crit a monster. Again, not quite as good as true Critical Element, but this combined with the base version of the Elemental Acceleration, means that the damage output is still substantial. So there you have it. As you can see, it is a pretty all-rounder build, having DPS options as well as quality of life options. It also comes with the essential skills that you need for the Guiding Land, such as Part Breaker, Geologist, and Fortify. But as I said at the start of this video, the bow is a hungry weapon to use when it comes to duels, so we couldn't get everything we would have liked. But nonetheless, this should provide you with a comfortable build to take into the Guiding Lands. And when it comes to taking on different monsters, you can always swap out the weapon as well as charm to counter the next monster you want to take on. But of course, pros and cons. Obviously the biggest pro with this build is it's an all-round build, maybe not specializing in any one area, but still allowing for a decent amount of damage output and survivability. It also is a build that comes with quite a few quality of life skills, such as health boost, constitution, stamina surge, and divine blessing. And on top of that, again, it's another bow build that can be easily customized by swapping out the weapon and charm for weapons and charms with different elements. But unfortunately, every build has its cons. The biggest, I would say, unfortunately for this build is its reliance on certain jewels. But nonetheless, this one is another build that I take into the Guiding Lands often when using the bow, but it's a little bit of a shame you have to constantly swap the bow and charm to counter the various monsters you want to hunt. So there we have it, those are the end game builds I use for the bow in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now of course there are more end game builds to come, such as builds that utilize the Safi Jiva weapons, and as I always say you don't have to use what is shown in these videos. Use what you want to use as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any item or gear sets. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you beginner Iceborne builds for the bow in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe, and like for more.